So in the first reading, we had this false accusation um, that Daniel um, takes care of and catches the dirty old men in their lies and uh, saves Susanna. But then in the gospel reading, we have uh, this account where the woman is caught in flagrante delicto, right? She's caught in the very act and brought uh, before Jesus. And they said, this is the law. What do you say? And he doesn't say anything. Um, And then uh, he kind of twists it around, of course, and says, let the one among you who's without sin cast the first stone. And of course, nobody's without sin, so nobody can rightfully condemn someone else. And so that gets us into this kind of tricky area where we look and we say, well, you know, who am I to judge? I can't tell other people that their actions are bad, right? I can't tell this woman who's caught in the very act of adultery that what she's doing is wrong. Well, no, that's not true. Of course, we can say that that's wrong. That's not something we should do. But then again, also, we don't have the right to stone her for that act, but at the same time, we look and we say, well, but what are my own sins? What are, the own, what are my own things that I'm guilty of? What are the things that um, get in the way of my relationship with God? What do I need to condemn myself for? What do I need to ask and say, how can I fix this? And of course, we look and we see that Jesus sends these people away one by one. They decide, all right, we're going to drop our rocks. We're going to leave. We can't condemn this woman. Um, And then Jesus says, where did they all go? Has no one condemned you? No. Well, neither do I. And that's where most people stop, right? Most people stop reading the gospel when Jesus says, I don't condemn you, right? Which if we stop there, then that means, you know, we'll just go on back to what you were doing, right? Go on back to whatever kind of seedy place you were and go back to your adultery. And I won't condemn you. But no, he continues on the next line. He says, go and from now on do not sin anymore. So Jesus comes to us in our brokenness and our sinfulness. And he says, look, I, I, I see, I know, right? I'm not going to condemn you. I'm going to forgive you. But don't do it again. Don't sin anymore. Stop sinning. Change your life. I'm giving you a new chance giving you a new opportunity. And so when we come to Christ, we come to him as we are broken, and he heals us, he binds us up. He says, you're all better now. Go back and try again. He doesn't say go back and go back to what you were doing that caused you to be broken in the first place. Go and try again. And if you get broken again, come back and I'll fix you and I'll put you back together and I'll send you out again. But avoid sin. Avoid sin. As we approach the passion of our Lord um, and ultimately his resurrection, we recognize that in the death of Christ, he does not condemn us. Rather, he unites his death to our death so that we may be united to his resurrection. We may be united to his healing. We may be united to his, his perfection. So that though sin has marred us, though sin has uh, deformed us, though sin has pushed us away from him and separated us, that through death and resurrection, we are united to him. And so let us not focus on um, what it is that is so much preventing us from doing God's will, from being God's friend, but rather let us allow him to heal us, to restore us, to unite us to him, so that indeed we may be with him in eternity.